so I, I initially went to Weber International um, and I did a postgrad year before that, but I had um, like Santa Fe and um, Erskine, they're in division two. Um, I had interest from Monmouth and, and West Point, West Point being my um, closest thing to a division one offer. I just didn't, the academics are insane at West Point, so I wasn't able to get in. Um, but that, that, those were the main schools, I would say. And then obviously you, you get, you get interest from like division threes and stuff like that. I, me personally, I wasn't interested in playing division three just because there was no, there's no athletic scholarships in division three. So for me, it was like uh, division one or bust. That was my mindset in, in high school. And then as you get close, you know, further along and you, and senior year comes and you only have, you know, division two slash NAI offers, you kind of get hit with that, that um, reality and, and you got to sign somewhere. Right. So, yeah. Speaking of, <clears throat> speaking of Monmouth, um, that's where we, I live in Jersey. So that's in the, near where we live. Monmouth yep. is a great college and they're uh, obviously yep. an up and coming team in basketball and um, football. And <clears throat> so, but w w what made you uh, led to choose Florida college? Um, so like I said, I went to Weber at first and then I transferred to Florida college. Um, Weber for me was just um, just not the right fit, and it you know they actually offered me when I was a freshman in high school, so I had a good relationship with the coach there, and um, it was kind of a decision that you know I, I didn't I wasn't sure that I wanted to go to Weber, and then I went to Weber and it, it didn't seem like the right fit. So then Florida College, get into Florida College, um, I took my time a little bit more and like you know, really got to know the school. And like, I, t I took a tour as a student before my visit. Like, I just wanted to see the school, you know, because that's, I mean, you spend, that's where you're spending your time. So, um, and I, and I, and I, I was sold on the coach there at the time, Coach Todd. So. Hmm. So what, what's your experience at Florida College so far? And what are you learning there to become a better point guard? And obviously, <laughs> uh, sometimes, Obviously, the colors are different than Florida Gators, but do people get that confused sometimes with the name? Um, I've I've never had it confused, but I'm actually I'm I, I finished my eligibility last year, so I'm I'm not I'm no longer at Florida College, but while I was there, I definitely developed as a player more mentally. I would say, uh, Coach Teichman, Chase Teichman, he's the head coach there now, and he was the assistant when I was there, and he really was kind of a, a, a player's coach and a friend to me and somebody that really taught me the game on, you know, because like I said, we we're kind of, you know, we're, we're like friends, right? So we were able to talk about it all the time and he was able to, to give constructive criticism and harsh criticism just to help me grow mentally. And I think mentally was, was like the biggest growth area for me. So physically, obviously, I got bigger, faster, stronger. You know, I worked on my game and stuff. But the most growth was definitely done mentally there, for sure. So obviously, during this tough and uh, tough time during this pandemic, and what do you what have you been doing just to stay ready uh, for the season, and um, also trying to work hard for the NBA too? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's funny. Ever since I've been kind of taking on social media and doing YouTube and TikTok and these things, I've like played more basketball than I ever have. And I worked harder at my game than I ever had just because um, I'm just really enjoying it now. Like in college, it felt like a job and I, I'm going at my own pace now. And so that love for the game just makes me like want to play the game more. So, yeah, I mean, I'm working out every day, um, lifting a few times a week, but definitely shooting every day and, and just playing with different guys. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely – I'm definitely ready if there's an opportunity out there, for sure. So, um, oh, by the way, uh, I just want to say congrats to you because you uh, re uh, recently, um, I, I think, signed with uh, Michael Raymond, right? Uh, yeah, my guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Raymond uh, representation. He's awesome. So I reached out to him for an interview, so he's going to let me know. But uh, what, what was it like when he reached out or he gave you the opportunity to sign with his agency group? I was super excited. He actually <clears> – <throat> And he doesn't even know this, so this this will be funny. But he, uh, I went TikTok live, and he was somebody in there, and he, you know, he just he just caught my eye with a comment, like it was just it was just a nice comment. I was like, hey, thanks, man, blah blah. 
And so I just followed them just because that's, that's what I do. If somebody, if somebody, you know, stands out to me or is nice to me or something, I'd most of the time just follow them, you know? So, uh, but anyways, he DM'd me afterwards and was like, Hey man, like he was just kind of explaining what he did and what he was like, you know, people he knew cause he's from Orlando, which is where I'm from. So, um, he was just explaining himself and like what he's trying to do in the future. And I just kind of like brushed it off. I'm sorry, Michael, but, uh, I kind of brushed it off and some time went by and, um, I saw he got on Instagram live. He had a little, he was doing a little podcast and I joined it just oh. out, just out of curiosity. I think you, I think, you know, the kid, um, Global Kid Media. You should check Global his- Kid Media. He's awesome, by the way. Check his page out. He does really good into Yeah. He's awesome, man. But, uh, so he interviewed Michael and I was like, Whoa, this, this dude's super well-spoken and I could just relate to him. He seemed hungry, but he also seemed really humble and logical. And, I've dealt with agents in the past that just try to sell pipe dreams and they, they start promising things and Michael wasn't that way. So like, that's what initially attracted me. And uh, so I just hit him up and I was like, yo, after you're done, get, like call me because I want to talk to you about, you know, I, I started taking his offer more serious and then we got on FaceTime and I was, I was sold. So I ended up signing with him, signing the contract day before yesterday and just stoked to work with him. He's, He's really good. So has any uh, NBA teams contacted him yet for your opportunity? No, um, I don't think NBA is going to be in the picture for me. Um, If a good enough deal comes up overseas, it would have to be a hefty deal because um, I just turned 26 and I'm not really interested in going overseas to play in a small country and make $1,500 a month, just like where I'm at. Not saying that, I mean, that's awesome, you know, that for the people that do that. But, um, but yeah, that's like, for me, it has to be worth it financially to, to leave everything I have here. So I probably won't end up pursuing that, uh, the pro career, unless something really good comes along. Would you consider playing in the G League um, in order for yeah. you know, to play? To, maybe that will help you to get into the NBA because I feel like, um, with this new rule, with the uh, the high school players don't have to go to college; they can just go right to the G League, and that's a new rule. Yeah. That in, and I really like that rule. So, um, I think that's a better way to help young players uh, get developed for the NBA. So, would you consider that? Absolutely. Um, I talked. So we, ha- I had this. I don't know if you're familiar with my my TikTok account, but I went back and forth with the Dallas Mavericks, just kind of a fun thing. And they were like, "Hey, like here's our G League team, if you're interested." And and um, maybe trying out or something. And uh, we did like a fun thing. It was like, a, they were like, you get 100K likes on this video. Uh, we'll have you in for, for we'll, we'll fly you out for a tryout kind of thing. So, um, but no, I'm super interested in the G League. And, but I'm not thinking about it. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of creating content right now and just playing the game that I really enjoy, you know? But, but I did think maybe when all this COVID stuff, um, calms down I'll want to pursue it more right. and you know so maybe next year I'll, I'll do a tryout um, for the Lakeland Magic or something like that but as for now I'm really just focusing on my content and stuff like that man that's a really good um, that's a good thing actually because I, I really I, I need to bring this up um, has anybody got you mixing up with the other Austin Mills <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard it I heard it a few times I've gotten it a few times on TikTok um and then other than that not really surprisingly I thought that was going to be an issue getting into this whole thing yeah. but when I ask people they're they're usually like oh yeah because no. and I'm thinking about um Demonte Freak I actually he's like the only big YouTuber I've I've had like constant contact with uh he's a really cool guy but if you're familiar like I don't know if people that are watching if they're familiar with Devonte, but He actually, I asked him about that and I was like, Hey, do you think, do you think this would hurt my brand? Do you think it would help it? Um, How does the other Austin Mills feel about this? And apparently they had already talked about it, which is really cool. And, um, but I think it can only help my brand in terms of like, you know, a YouTube video could be Austin Mills versus Austin Mills. Like it's not going to hurt the brand because when they watch a video, they see me, they don't see anything else. They're not, they don't care about the name they're looking at what's in front of them and if they enjoy it. So it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? But, but no, a few times I've gotten, I've gotten mixed up, but not as many, not as many as, as you would think. 
Yeah, so actually, I, I subscribed to your YouTube channel before this interview. and Appreciate it, man. I've seen your videos, and man, you put really good content up. And um, I, I don't use TikTok that much. I'm not a TikTok guy, but uh, because yeah. I'm, I'm really I'm – I don't really, blame me. Well, uh, because with this podcast, I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on this. Because I'm doing, I, I feel like I'm doing big things with this, and it's growing rapidly. And uh, uh, that's why I have no time for <laughs> making other content right now. I'm just focused on this podcast. So this is the only way. <laughs> But um, so speaking for your YouTube, uh, what is your goal? Um, obviously you uh, hoop a lot, and then um, is that your, what do you do to keep people entertained, like kids and young, uh, actually young kids that are into basketball too? What what is your goal with, for young kids? Um, I mean, I just want to spread a positive message that, and, and I want to maintain like the home. I I I take pride in not being into myself, and I think that a lot of people on social media or in YouTube think a lot of themselves not trying to be judgmental or anything but I just want to spread a positive message and positively affect kids lives and just when people think about basketball and watching my videos I just want them to to be happy you know um that's pretty much it man nothing too deep but but yeah yeah so <laughs> go with Kimita just messaged me on Instagram saying uh Oh, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I, I think um, he wants to know if you want if you want to come on his show too. I was just talking to, to my girlfriend about that um, <laughs> as we were in the in the car. We went to her parents' house, but um, but yeah, I, I would definitely love to do that. <laughs> I was just talking about him for like five minutes. Um, How old is he? Because he's super well spoken and just a smart kid. Yeah, so he's fourteen years old, and he wants to. He, wow. has, he has a question for you right now on my Instagram. Right, let's get it. What's up? Uh, he wants to know uh, if you're connected with some top guys in the NBA. Um, n no, no top guys in the NBA. Um, I'm trying to think of people that I know. Per no, not really. I mean, I've known people that have played in the NBA, but they've been like one or two year guys that nobody knows about. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll send you his page. I mean, I think he's, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure you saw his page already, but uh, I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah. I was just in his live um, a few minutes ago. Oh really? <laughs> had the Syracuse coach on. Yeah, I uh, I had him on too, the Syracuse coach. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, before and um I, I'm I'm um for me I just help him out and then uh, I help like my other friends, all my other friends, they do podcasts too. So I'll send you some of my other friends' podcasts so you can check it out. Yeah, I, I'm a big podcast fan. I like to get on here and chat it up for sure. So have you seen JJ Reddick's podcast? I have. He's I actually I've seen it through TikTok. He he advertises his podcast, which I think you should do too. Is yeah. you don't even have to spend extra time on the content. You just upload whatever you get from, you know, you if you see a good conversation or something, you just throw it on TikTok real quick. You know, it's good good advertisement. But that's what he does with his. He's awesome. Yeah, so speaking of that, what advice actually – yeah, I, actually this is really good uh, question for you since you are all about content. And what advice would you give these podcasters like me? And um, obviously um, there's a thing called StreamYard where you can uh, go live everywhere. And I've been doing work with uh, Daniel Ortiz with his podcast. He, I'm sure you know him. He's a brother of Meadow of Peace. Um, so I've been doing work with him too. But what advice would you give uh, podcasters that they want to make their work a little bit more? Um, interesting I mean obviously just finding uh, you know the best people to talk to I think connections are as huge right because if you have if you have LeBron and I'm just this is an yeah. example if you have LeBron on a podcast tons of people are going to watch by default so I think definitely and I've seen you and Global Kid Media have done a good job at getting people um, on the podcast that are that are important so to speak um, so, I mean, I think that's the most important thing is who you're talking to. Um, and yeah, just directing the conversation well, which you guys do a great job of. So I don't, you know, I think your guys' podcast will grow as you just continue to put out content of people, you know, that other people want to, want to hear from. So speaking of JJ Reddick, Global, Global, Global K Media had him on his show, uh, at the oh, wow. Yeah, so he interviewed J.J. Reddick live from the bubble when the Pelicans were still playing. That's nuts. That's huge. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so my next question for you, um, so what, what, what do you mainly – what is your, I mean, focus right now, obviously with the contact, but workout-wise, what do you, you want to improve on if you get the opportunity in the G League or 
wherever you decide to do. Yeah, um, I'm trying to, I mean, really just, I, I feel like any high level player, not saying that I'm a really high level player or anything, but any high level player, there comes a point where you just keep working on everything and there's not anything that, because if you're a good player, there's no real weakness that you have unless you're incredibly ta talented in certain areas like Rondo. And then obviously he's, he has a glaring issue, which is shooting. But like most people, there's not a whole lot, most good players, not a whole lot to like really hone in on. So you just continue to, to craft what you already have and just get better at everything. Mm -hmm. um, so explain to me, what do you bring to the game as a point guard? And are you a pass first point guard or do you like to get the feel of the game uh, by scoring first? Or do you like to give it to your teammates early in the game? I mean, I love to score the ball, but um, it just depends, honestly. I, I really just play according to my teammates. If if I'm playing with um, – like, I had two completely different roles at the two two schools I went to. At Weber, I was a scorer, and the people, you know, they looked at me to score, and then I went to Florida College, and they looked at me to, to make plays, create, but then dish. When, so it just depends what team. But I can say um, I love to – I love using a high ball screen or isolation and just kind of getting creative with with what I do. Um, I'm not – I wouldn't say I'm a flashy point guard, but I'm, I'm more towards flashy than I am conservative. Yeah, so I had actually – I had Isaiah Thomas on my show um, on my 25th birthday, actually. Uh, he obviously former Piston and the great and the legend. And yeah, that's, that's awesome too, man. I had the opportunity to talk to him. Actually, his daughter helped me out to get this done. It took me four months to get this interview done and I'm just honored. Yeah. I'm just honored that he came on, but what would you say that he's a, one of the uh, point guards that you looked up to back in the day or who else other like the, the old school players I'm talking about. Right. right. For me, um, I was always kind of a product of my present. I wasn't looking at old school guys. Um, I honestly haven't even seen that many. I mean, I've of course seen him play, but um, I wasn't, I wasn't really in tune with with point guards of the past. Right. Um, but, yeah, he's – I mean, he's one of the greats, of course, you know, but. So, I want to get to an important topic, and everybody be sure, everybody should be talking about this, uh, social injustice. Um, um, so, I, I'm just proud of these players uh, taking a stand and wearing these Black Lives Matter shirts and boycotting these games. Obviously, they're back playing, but I'm really proud of what the WNBA is doing, NBA, and – uh, NFL, hopefully they do the same thing. But what is your whole take in the situation? What we, what can we do better um, to solve this issue? And obviously, uh, with the Steve Nash hiring, uh, what was your reaction with Steve, Steve Stephen A. Smith's comments? And um, is this a crazy? He went off. Uh, when I didn't see. I didn't see what Stephen A. said. Yeah, but uh, actually, he said that it, it's a white privilege that Steve Nash got the job. And I, I mean, I. I get where he's coming from, but it is, it, that's not the time to put put it put it with it. But um, but what what is your whole thing in the situation? What 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 can we do to help this situation go away? I think um, the main thing is, and what I always try to, I've talked about it a lot um, with different people. I know I, I'm really close with both sides of the spectrum, so I try to respect both sides when I listen. And um, just kind of try to be a middleman and kind of a devil's advocate just to challenge people in their way of thinking. Uh, I think I think the dangerous part is when we get too far on either side of the spectrum. I think um, I think that I, I, I sit somewhere in the middle. I'm definitely all for um, I'm definitely all for players standing up for what they believe and people standing up for what they believe in. If you feel like you're you know, an equal, like my, my best friends are, are African-American. I have three best friends are all African-American. And um, I mean, we talk about it a lot. At the end of the day, to me, it boils more down to the system that's the issue and not your everyday practical conversation. A lot of people don't deal with direct racism. It's, it's kind of, in my opinion, it's made from, from the system, which is, which is more deep rooted. But yeah, I just think um, the dangerous part of this whole thing is the extremist on both sides and so I think I take points like 
from every police union that you hear about, it's sickening. Like I, I've posted about how mad it's made me and stuff like that. But um, just like anything, people take off with, you know, they'll, they'll take off and run with it. And I, and I'm, I want to make this clear. I'm not, I'm not an advocate for, for violent protests of any kind. So that's, that's huge for me. And I, I just wish there was a way that we could, um, you know, stand up and, and speak for people that feel inadequate or in, like they're being treated um, unfairly without violence. That's, that's pretty much what it boils down to for me. Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm really tired of this seeing this happening. And we all, all, it's all about equality now in this generation. And it's still going on, which is mine. It's just crazy and it's frustrating to see. And yeah. I'm really tired of it. And some yeah. of us need to <laughs> come together as a community just to find out what we can do. Um, so I'm, I'm just happy what um, these players are doing. So hopefully they can yeah, keep Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so now I do this rapid fire segment with all my guests that come on the show. You ready for this? <laughs> I think so. Let's see. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> uh, favorite food? Pizza. Pepperoni pizza. Easy. <clears throat> what made you get into TikTok? Uh, a friend. A friend. <laughs> uh, favorite thing to do outside of basketball? Call of Duty or, or 2K or Madden. Hmm. Video games. So. Uh, thoughts on this NBA bubble so far, the playoff? Um, hectic. <laughs> just just nuts. Do you think the, the, the Heat will go up 3-0 tonight? Yes, I do. Strongly. Yeah. Called Heat to win it before. I actually said the Magic were going to take the Bucks to, to 6 or 7, but I, I really think the Heat are, have this series in the bag for sure. So what do you, uh, man, speaking of the heat, uh, this, speaking of uh, not, uh, speaking of developing players, the Miami Heat, uh, heat they're the well-known organization. They know how to uh, develop players. And um, what, what would it be like if you decide to play in the G League, um, to play underneath their G League team and learning from that system? Because I feel like if you're, if you're part of a Pat Riley system and an Eric Spolstra system, I feel like you can gel in with the Miami Heat. Yeah. Um, I mean, gosh, that would be just an incredible opportunity. I, I think the the hardest part of playing in the G League or anything like that or a professional team is just getting there. I think I was given an opportunity. I mean, that that's pro I'm obviously biased towards myself, but I just I have a strong belief in myself and my my ability. So I think I would I would figure it out for sure and compete. Dude, you, you, I've seen video on you already on YouTube. You can shoot the ball, man. You can play. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, who do you have in the NBA Finals? Uh, before the playoffs, I said Clippers Raptors, and I'm sticking to it. Really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got Celtics Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's literally opposite. Bring it, back, bring it back to old rivalry. I feel like Celtics are playing. Out of the <laughs> that would be nuts. Yeah. That would be nuts. Basketball needs that. Celtics, Lakers. Yeah, so if you, sake. if you learn this time, oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, for real. So my next question for you, um, what what advice would you give these young athletes uh, that are trying to get to their goals? Oh, man, so much. But um, uh, first and foremost, <laughs> this is so cliche, just get it done in the classroom before anything, before you focus on anything get it done in the classroom. I was not a good student. I graduated high school with a 2.0. And so every young player, like I've been into my old high school specifically to talk to kids about how important it is because I've already been through it. So first and foremost, grades, most important thing. It can be the difference between you playing division one and NAI, just, just like that. It happened to me, you know? Um, and, and basketball wise, just, just work on everything and don't conform to, to what you see, just be you, just be unique and focus on competing with yourself and not other people. That's, that's pretty much what I think is the best thing to do. Favorite memorable game that you played so far in your career? Uh, all together or like college or high school? Uh, Juco and the Florida College. I uh, know, actually, um, Juco and the Florida College, yeah. <clears throat> so at Weber, my, my second game, um, ever in college I had 26 
So that was definitely my best moment there as a freshman um, and just battling back from, you know, because I actually went post-grad because of grades. So I was just excited to be there and, and had a really good game early on. So that was a great moment. Um, remember that vividly. And then Florida College, um, it was probably the game after I, I was in a really bad car accident my junior year and just battling back and just the, just the reception from the team in the locker room and and the fan and and our fans and stuff like that was just incredible. Um, I I wasn't ready to play. I, I didn't have a great game. I had like ten points that game, but it, it just felt so good to be a part of it again. So, hmm. was uh, how concerned? Well, that's that's crazy. But how concerned were you that you, you uh, there was a chance that you uh, couldn't play again? After that, that was not even that oh, honestly that never crossed my mind once uh i mean when i woke up from the from the crash i was out of it and wasn't you know wasn't thinking about basketball or anything and then once i realized like i only had a broken arm and a little fracture in my neck and just i was just beat up wow um so it never really i, I never even thought about i mean i used to sneak in to the weight room before I got cleared, I used to have to go down um, into our basement at like 11 o'clock at night when everybody was asleep just to get a workout in. So I was like, I had a broken arm and like I was in a sling or like an arm brace and I was doing squats and everything I could. So I was just, just hungry, you know. You got, we got to put your story out there, man. People need to see who you are. And uh... it's been a long journey. Um, yeah, for the people that know me really well, they know everything. But I'm excited to – that's one thing I really want to just put my story together and because I feel like it's – it's the, the main word I can think of is perseverance. Um, although a lot of it has – or not a lot of it, some of it, like with grades, like that's self-inflicted. But nonetheless, perseverance is perseverance and just, you know, just bouncing back, man. You know what I'm going to do after this interview? I'm, I'm going to send it to you. Obviously, I'm going to send it to you and your link so you, so you can yep. post it. But I'm going to tag a couple – I'm going to tag Steve Nash in this and a couple other people. So, hey, man. <laughs> Maybe they'll see it. <laughs> What's up, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, like your story is really inspiring, and people should see it too. And yeah, That's another – I mean, I'm, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to inspire young athletes and just spread a positive message. Um it can get tough for all of us, you know, it, it gets dark, like for any athlete there, there's dark moments and just the one thing that you can hold on to is like what you can do to persevere through that, you know, so. How many ankles have you broken in your career? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A lot. Mostly because that's just my play style. I love, um, it's just what comes natural to me, um, you know. I've been told I'd, you know, early on, like at Weber, they're like, you're dancing with the ball, you're dancing with the ball. And I've definitely um, toned it down and made it more practical to play in games, but I still have that aspect. Where I just, I love the, I love the ISO. I love to like, I'm going to get by you and I'm going to, I'm going to shift you while I'm doing it. <laughs> so. I, have, I have one comparison for you as a, in the, a former, he's a former NBA player. Let me see. If you agree with this Jason yeah. Williams yeah I, no yeah for sure <laughs> I played against him my freshman year at Weber really? obviously he's an older guy he had he has a team that he goes around um he, I think he's playing for Pedro's posse right now but uh they came and we played against his team for the exhibition so that was like whoa I, I, I definitely looked up to him growing up just because I feel like we had similar play styles and and similar heights and, and and stuff like that so yeah i i feel like you can he, uh he reminds me i mean you remind you remind him uh me of, uh, of him so the yeah. way he play the play the game and pass the ball and obviously he's known uh his nickname is white chaka and he's known for yeah. all <laughs> that's a compliment I'll, i appreciate that yeah oh hold on uh, we have a question for you here i'm getting questions uh on instagram here for you hold on okay Oh, are we Instagram live too? Not Instagram live, but uh, I got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it's all from Global Kid Media, so I got it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm getting on with him soon. I, I, I got to. 
All right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ask the questions away. All right. Here's one for you. Um, he, he wants to know. Okay. He wants to know how many followers you have on Insta on TikTok, actually. TikTok, um, at thir I just passed 30,000 recently. So, um, I started a little late, but I'm going to start picking it up. I got some cool ideas to kind of get back going. I I've honestly taken like a week hiatus from TikTok and um, just focusing on YouTube. I love YouTube so much and I'm so excited about it. So that's where my mind's been, but I'm going to start putting. Um, so that should grow. The TikTok should grow. Yeah. And then uh, another question from him. Um yeah, let me see. Okay, how many followers do you have on Instagram? Instagram, I only have like two thousand. Um, I'm yeah, I'm not really like a, a a big Instagram guy. I don't. I rarely post. Maybe once every few months at this point. Oh, he wants to know if you can hop on here on Zoom too. If you want to ask. Yeah, absolutely. Get him on. <laughs> the more, the merrier. All right. Yeah, you can. Uh, sorry about that. No, you're good. All right, let's see. All right, in the meantime, um, can you speak? Obviously, we lost a, a couple of legends here. Um, uh, Chad Rosman, uh, John Thompson, Clifford Robinson, and Tom Seaver. Can you speak on the legacy of all of them? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm familiar with, with all of them. It's just – it all happened really – like, they all – passed away really close to each other which was like the most disturbing part of it um like on i was watching espn one night and it was literally a memorial for all three or four of them at once because it was all within a week or two but um yeah just i mean amazing people as well as what they did in their career so yeah um so have you, have you like uh interacted uh interacted with like Kirfer robinson or john thompson before or no no, never. Um, John Thompson, the only experience I have with John Thompson was not a personal one, but I was just in the, I was playing at AAU and he was at, he was at the game that we were, that we were watching. So I've seen him, but never spoke to him or anything. So what are your thoughts on, uh, let me ask you this, thoughts on John Morant as a player. Um, he just won rookie of the year today, actually. Congrats to him. But uh, what are your thoughts on John Morant? This guy is a special talent. Yeah, he's, He's unique. Uh, I love him so much because I really just – I truly think he is him. And he's not – he doesn't try to be anybody else. And he doesn't really remind me of anybody specifically. There was a lot of Westbrook comparisons. But Ja has this unique um, fluidity about – I don't know if that's even a word, fluidity. Oh, I oh, oh, mean uh, – oh, fluent, fluent. Yeah, just like a fluent, mo like natural motion that Westbrook doesn't have. So I think Ja will definitely have a better career than Russell, uh, be more valuable to teams than Russell. And, um, yeah, he's just – I mean, he's going to have a, a sick career. He's awesome. He can do everything. He can score at all three levels. He's athletic. He can stroke it. He can do everything. So outside of this podcast, how many podcasts have you done in your career? So Only one. I'm just getting started on, as, like, a social media presence. I'm new to this, so – um, I did one, it, it was, it was a podcast was called explain yourself. And, um, yeah, it was just like a 10 minute podcast and I'm excited to get into this realm and meet new people and talk to new people and get on as many podcasts as I can to help, to help, um, grow what I have. Have you considered starting your own podcast during this pandemic? Like what JJ Reddick does and like what we do. Uh, just explain, explain your, get your story out there also and um, having like weekly guests and talk about your journey, their journey. Have you considered that as a possible? I definitely have. Um, for me, though, it would be more of a side thing. Um, like I still might do it on my YouTube channel and just like every now and then just throw a podcast in there with a guy that I know. Uh, I've, been, I've been blessed and fortunate to meet a lot of people through basketball. And so just having – how, you know, maybe using that connection to have somebody on there that that would be cool for people to hear from. And I also love podcasts. Like I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast like all the time. So I love it. I love talking to people and meeting people and stuff. So it's something that, that I've thought about for sure.
Yeah, so speaking of UFC, um, I had uh, Frank Agra on my show a couple months back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was an honor talking to him. I'm trying to get Joe Rogan on my show. It's hard, though. He's busy. Yeah, Joe Rogan, let me, <laughs> let me know. That's my guy. He's awesome. I'd love to. He's a brain. He's a big brain. Do you big uh, UFC fan? Uh, not a big one, but I, <clears throat> I definitely like. Uh, I'll definitely watch the fight if somebody pays for it. It's kind of more of a social event for me personally. I'm uh, not like super into the sport, but it's entertaining for everyone. I think you know. Hopefully, you join soon here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, my next question here for you. So if you get, obviously, uh, if you do get the opportunity to play again in the whoever, wherever, overseas, G League, um, and hopefully the NBA, how grateful will, how grateful will it be that you, you'll be able to still play the game that you love and continue your career and put your name out there so people know? Yeah, that would, I mean, it would definitely mean a lot to, uh, just to have that validation of, of being a pro and just being being wanted from, from a professional team, I mean, that would be great. But um, like I said, I'm really, I'm really locked in on just the YouTube and content aspect of it and just trying to like give back. Uh, I've been so fortunate um, as, as many downs as I've had in the game, I've had some, some unbelievable ups and experienced some things that a lot of people don't. So I just want to, use that positive energy to just spread a, a good message and affect people in a positive way. But yeah, that would be incredible just to have the affirmation from a team there he is. as a professional. Sweet, sweet. Uh, let's do this. All right, this is going to be fun right now. This, this is about to be lit. <laughs> this is about to be lit right now. Let's Here. get it. <laughs> All right. Let's My go. guy. How do I, how can we? pull it up oh he's okay there you go hey what's going on man what's up man i'm a big fan i've been, wa <laughs> been watching you for like the past few days right here. hey bro i appreciate it i've been looking at some of your stuff too appreciate that man so uh but yeah, uh sorry you want to ask him ask some questions you can you can go yeah so i just wanted to hop on and ask a couple of things first of all as nathan told me I know you're big on TikTok. I've been trying to grow my following for a, for a while. What's your best advice on, on social media and on TikTok? Oh, best advice for TikTok is just to definitely be yourself. Like from a from a content aspect, just be yourself. People catch on to energy and just like you trying to to push a certain thing. So um, that's definitely huge like just be yourself but then also there's all sorts of things that are good for the algorithm like the length of the video um the kind of music you use in the video like if it's trending music uh if the music is irrelevant some things that shouldn't be in the algorithm that are that you can use to your advantage if that makes sense yeah what would you say is your favorite video you've made so far favorite video i've made so far um i've made like probably I've made so many. Probably, probably my first one ever. I would say uh, it was like, it, it was like a little kind of like dance, but not really. I can't dance, but and then I just hit like a, I just threw it backwards and hit like a, a half court shot, and uh, it. But it wasn't so much the video as it was the response to the video that was new to me, um, because I've always been really conservative on social media, and it was the first time I was like. I'm going to just try this thing and see if I can like pursue this, you know? So it was just like, Oh, maybe I can do this. So that's why it was so cool for me. Yeah. Bro, I know you're connected with Michael Raymond. I had him on my show. Tell me about you and Mike. Yeah. I, I started working with Michael because of your guys podcast. Um, really? I wasn't really considering it um, until then. And then, and I got to see him live and how he, just how he spoke and got to know him a little bit. And um, yeah, so then I was like, yo, call me after this. And then, and then we talked and then I signed to his, to his representation group, so. Yeah, that's dope, bro. Yeah, I'm excited. He's, he's a good guy, he's hungry. We're, we're gonna grow together for sure. Hmm. And he's big on, he's, his qualities for sure are pretty huge. Yeah, yeah he's, 
he's got a lot of a lot of things going for him. He's just not like he's one of those guys you just know he's gonna make it. And that's what I, I saw. I saw somebody that was like um just not seen by anybody yet, but that he's gonna make it. And I kind of I'm not saying I'm gonna make it, but I kinda I feel like I have a lot more to offer that that, that people don't really know about and that uh that I'm excited to, sh- to share. So I feel like we're coming from the same spot. We're both hungry, we're both uh, we bought, we both also have an ear to learn. So just similar qualities that will help us work well together. So, um, you want to do your, actually we can, I, I just finished my rapid fire segment. So you want to, you want to do your segment here? Yeah. So my, my signature segment is a flip the switch. Basically, uh, you might've seen it. I have the person that I'm talking to ask me a few questions. Flip yeah, it over yeah, to you. I've seen that. <laughs> you can do it with so you me and Nathan. Ask you some questions? Yeah, ask me and Nathan both probably like two. Yeah, probably two of the max. Yeah. Um, this is dang, I don't even know. Um, who's the? What's your favorite interview ever? Like not, not your biggest person ever, but just your favorite conversation ever. So I got to interview these kids from the Special Olympics, and that was at the Pro Bowl last year in in 2019, and this was at a time like they were playing a flag football game with Patrick Mahomes and Von Miller and a bunch of huge NFL athletes. So after talking to them, it was like a little bit different because they're not a celebrity, obviously. And so talking to them, just hearing their mindset on things, the way that they didn't have everything going for them, but just the way they looked at life. Yeah, it's definitely humbling. That's for sure. That's awesome. And then my next question, um, uh, what's your, I mean, what's your goal with the, do you want to, to cross over to YouTube with your podcast? Like, what do you want to come of, of this? So I've been, I've been in touch with some people from network TV, hopefully trying to do something there so far. Nothing's like not much progress has been made to this point, but I mean, if I can go global comedia to a big network, that would be huge as well. That's one of my goals. I just want to really you know, be a platform for kids in the long run, global comedia being if kids want to do something, this can be that support system for them. I wish I had that and, you know, take care of connecting them with different people. Yeah, man. I didn't know you were 14. You're like the smartest 14 year old I've ever met. You know I really, it means a lot, bro. You know what else is <laughs> We both have the same birthday, too. So. Yeah. We yeah. Share a birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bro. That's. You guys are connected somehow. <laughs> That's crazy, but yeah. So, uh, you have any questions for my podcast, or? Um. Yeah. What's your? I mean, same question. What's your? What's your goal for for your podcast? Like, what do you? Are you just trying to make it a, a massive brand, a massive podcast, or do you want to go TV route? I'm going to. I'm uh, like my goal. Actually, I do a uh, me and my um. I do another podcast with my other friends. Um. But th- that's on Zoom. But we put that on hold right now. Uh, we're, we're building our own brand so this is, i started this brand uh at the beginning of the pandemic i'm over like over 500 episodes so i got to come back and look see how many episodes I, episodes i have and for me the goal of obviously being on tv espn or whoever which outlet gives me the opportunity i'm really i'm definitely taking it and um, yeah, I, I, my goal is to keep people entertained especially during the tough times and yeah but, man I, i've watched both of you guys podcasts it's i just it's super impressive. Both of you guys, I just like you guys are doing an awesome job. So just keep doing exactly what you're doing. Don't try to do more or less. No, just because the guests I bring on, not only you don't like my goal, my podcast is not only talk about sports, but their life journeys, where you guys came from and your inspiring stories. And it doesn't matter which school or which uh it doesn't matter the, about the big name. It matters Oh, yeah. I'm huge. That, I'm huge on that because I, I will, and then this is my arrogant side is going to come out. I will play anybody from any division, from any league. I'm not scared of anybody on the basketball court. And I think that that gets people get so caught up into divisions and, and your label. I play, I play, I've played with tons of pros. I played with NBA guys before. And um, I mean, it, there honestly is not as big of a gap as most people would think. Just the casual fan is like, oh, he's in the, you know, he's this, he's that, he's, he's division one. He's, he's better on that now. 
Yeah. I know I've had I I've had teammates in NAI that I mean would would like we took a, a division one team to overtime. We you know, I've played close games with division one teams. So it's I mean it's we saw that in this college season too, like I mean, Duke losing to SF Austin and that's possible. Yeah. You know, so many teams losing I believe Kentucky lost like Evansville. It happened all yep. the time where these big time schools number one, number two and as soon as they get to that number one spot, they lose the team that nobody's heard of before. Yeah, and every year there's there's more than double. There, you know, there's there's dozens of NAI teams that beat Division One teams, and that doesn't really get talked about. But I'm here to spread, you know, shine the light on NAI basketball, and it is for real. You get a lot of guys that don't have the grades, didn't have the grades. Obviously, there is bad NAI basketball, hundred percent. But, I mean, there are some absolute studs in the NAI basketball also, more so than Division Two, in my opinion, just because Division II, um, you know, you, you have good grades there, relatively good grades. NAI, the, man, it's just, it's just about hooping. You know, they, the, the requirements for schooling is not intensive. So you get some guys that aren't good in the classroom, but, but hey, we're here to hoop, so that that really doesn't matter when you're on the court. I don't care what your grades are, <laughs> you know. So before, yeah. We, yeah. So before we get to the last two things, I'd be considered playing over in Australia league, the NBL and the FIBA, because we interviewed uh, Corey Williams. Um, he's a 14-year-old pro. Actually, we should connect with him. Uh, I'll send you his page. His name is Corey Williams. He covers the NBL uh, Australian league. Um, have you do you know about that league? And if you do, have you considered playing there? Yeah, I know about it. Um, for me, it's just really tough to get to big leagues like that because, um, because I played at the NAI, and so if I wanted to play in a league like that, I would have to directly impress someone in person, and um, to do that, you have to you have to travel and invest in that. So. For me, like I said, it's not it's not my mindset. Uh, me and Michael Raymond have talked about it. If the opportunity presents itself and it makes sense, then. But it's definitely a secondary thing for me. I'm I'm super into the content side and just uh, you know just affecting people in a positive way. Just simple as that. And one conversation we were having with Corey was about how big the power of you know social media of the internet is today for people like me and you and Nathan too who have never experienced the world without the internet, but you can put yourself out there and put your, you know, your highlight reels out there. Somebody just has to take a notice of that. For you, do you think you can still got, get an opportunity, you know, virtually, or is it pretty much still in person to come from a league like, I mean, from. Yeah. So like you said, the league that I come from, so, you know, I could, I could have some great film, but at the end of the day, it's against NAIs. Yeah. And overseas, that's just not well respected. That's just the fact of the matter. So even if I do have really good film, um, they they want to see it against Division One guys. So yeah, that that that, in my opinion, that needs to change. It doesn't matter who you play against. It matters how talented you are. And these players, uh, how these players compete in a high level in the lower division. So they need to, they need to change that rule where. So that, that's just this this is why teams miss out on. Uh, I, this is a word I like to say a lot um, under um, like under the gem gems I call it g players gems so meaning that all these teams miss out on these players from other div divisions because they only focus on division one players they don't go down to the uh, to the, the lower roots where they should they should look at and you can find a lot of talented players in division three or whoever so I, I feel like they're missing out on all these players like you obviously, and all these other players. But um, the, the last few things for me, uh, this is a question I've been bringing up to all my guests about the late Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna, mama mentality, and the rest of the people that were involved. And do you guys remember where you were at that day and uh, what did they mean to you? Yeah, um, I, was in, I was in the apartment with my girlfriend. Um, we had just turned on the TV. I think we got a notification immediately turned on the TV. And we, we both were in tears. I mean, it was just, it was, it, yeah. I mean, you guys know it just hit everyone different. It felt really personal, even though we didn't know him personally. 
it was just it was one of those deaths that you'll never forget no matter what generation it is you're just like just like you just asked where were you at when Kobe died that's that's you know what I mean it's that of that magnitude yeah and the last thing here for me would you like to say anything to all the nurses doctors and essential workers yeah my girlfriend is actually occupational therapist so she's in she's in that uh, line of work and yeah just you know keep going on the front lines and and thank you um somebody's got to do it and a lot of those people are staying in those positions they're not they're not quitting their jobs or you know, they're really embracing the role that they have and it is such a big role right now so yeah and just I just, thank you to all those I just, I just want to say thank you to your girlfriend for uh keep helping people out also and she's taking the risks to go into that building and and help people so uh, tell her I said thank you and she's uh she's a warrior for that and um, I, I keep telling my friends they deserve a pay raise, all these nurses and other people. Preaching in the choir, absolutely. You got anything else, Vidon, or? Nah, man, I just want to say it was, I was honored to, to hop on for a couple of minutes, talk to you, hear your story. I'll hit you up on, on Instagram, be in touch over social media. I got to send you some of my TikToks, see what the formula <laughs> is to, to blow those up, <laughs> I got man. you. Uh, I got you, man, and I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, I would I would love to be on your podcast. Um, but but we'll talk. We'll talk. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so, so I'm uh, Nathan Ramachandra from the Andrew Hour Sports Podcast Show and I just wanna say thank you for joining us today. Uh, this has been an honor. Awesome. Um, so I'll be posting this on all social media formats and I'll send you this link so you can post it on your YouTube. Um for some reason Instagram only gives us uh fifteen minutes to post, so I gotta I I have to okay. come your Instagram so 15 minutes is the max but uh but for the rest of y'all so I'll post I post a full link on YouTube, uh, Twitter Instagram Facebook but I'll send you the uh YouTube link via email and then so you can do you can do whatever you want so you can post on your YouTube thank you so much for for having me on here too it was, it was exciting this is all this is kind of the start of my journey so I appreciate you um you know noticing me so thank you no problem. And uh, shout out to Michael, your agency group. Um, I'm hoping to have him on soon. Uh, like Vidan already had him on. And I saw his interview with Michael. That was a great one. Um, and also, er, tune in. Uh, Austin, you should tune in tomorrow. I'm having Bobby Jackson on the Kings assistant coach. So, tomorrow. Hey, I'm, I'm tuning in to all. I'm all on both of your guys' stuff. Like, I was just in uh, Global Kid Media stuff. So, I'll be tuned in to you as well, for sure. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, so uh, thank you again, and thank you for uh, thank you, Benan, for hopping on here for a little bit, and uh, I'll send you this link too, and keep it up. And Sounds good, man. Happy PC. All right, man. Appreciate you again. Mm -hmm. Talk soon. All right. All right. See you.